Hey there and welcome back to the Ice Sheet and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete and today we complete episode 12 of our RimWorld Ice Sheet survival series. Last time we left off after an episode full of research, but we also managed to keep our pet Muffalo alive. Today we start things off with a bit of mining, because we once again have big plans and those require vast amounts of steel. After mining 5 chunks, Cambia gets hungry and so we can send him packing. He can then make one more tour after dinner and haul the rest tomorrow. And because Cambia still has a bit of carrying capacity left, we are also going to have him mine a bit more on the next day. And once he's done, our steel reserves are up to 325. That, however, does not bring an end to the preparations just yet. As Cambia once again heads out, we can queue up some component mining. First of all, though, he can make use of a few sandstone blocks that have dropped in an earlier episode. We need to build quite a big wall today, and at this point I no longer want to use precious steel to do that. Now, it has to be said, sandstone isn't the most durable material out there. I would prefer limestone or even granite, but from the five types of stone available in the game, sandstone is right in the middle, and it has the added bonus of being the quickest type of stone to work with. However, as Cambia heads out for a second hauling trip, Randy Random throws the first raid of the episode at us. And just from looking at it, we can see this one packs quite the punch. We have six pirates against us, and apart from one, all of them are equipped with modern long-range weaponry, so Cambia definitely needs to be careful. Back at the base, we have luckily already hauled everything inside. We now have 150 units of sandstone, and can now focus on the attack at hand. And even though we are facing enemies with long-range weapons, we will have Cambia head out for a moment. I think it would be best to take out at least one or two of them before they enter our traps, otherwise they might have a chance of entering our base, and at that point things could get very chaotic. Now, even though we're facing an enemy with a rifle here who definitely has superior range, the opponent apparently does not want to shoot back just yet, and that allows Cambia to land a few precious hits. Now, the attacker isn't dead yet, but rushing forward all alone was definitely a costly mistake. Now, however, the counterfire has begun, and like I said, our enemy not only has more range but also more accuracy, so we are going to retreat a bit. However, with three more enemies coming around the corner, we eventually get the drop on them, we land a few more hits and weaken at least one of them. Now, however, it's time to head back into the base and quickly because we are under gunfire at this point, and to no one's surprise, Cambia also comes away with his first wound. Now luckily the enemy who stayed behind just shot his companion in the back, and so we now have two weakened enemies approach our traps. And a few seconds after that we have the big surprise, with only one of six attackers dead and another one unable to move, the pirates decide to flee. Now I don't know, maybe there was a polar bear in action somewhere around the map, but be that as it may, I think it's safe to say we got lucky here. This means we can now focus on healing Cambia's wounds, and once those are patched up, Cambia can grab something to eat before we then begin with the cleanup. On the next morning then, Cambia is already fully healed again, and shortly after we can see him haul corpses and equipment back into the storage rooms. And after the busy events of the day before, Cambia goes to bed early tonight. I think he has more than deserved it. On the next morning, we then finally continue with our preparations. Cambia has just mined some compacted machinery, and he is now hauling four components back to the base. By the way, as you can see, we have also run out of human meat, which is why Cambia has switched over to muffalo milk. I have also forbidden him to use the door to the muffalo stables, otherwise he would go in there and steal our muffalo's meals. However, with the muffalo milked, we are now ready for some building action. And what you can see here, that is going to be another line of defense featuring three turrets. In the last episode, we unlocked the research project gun turrets, and today we are going to put some down to strengthen our defenses. Now, I decided to put them behind our existing defenses, simply because those already do the job quite well. Putting the turrets outside of the base would cause them unnecessary harm, because they are understandably a prime target for enemy attacks. And because the turrets also require power to operate, putting them closer to our power supplies also makes sense. 
Now, the sandstone structure that we built here that is used to protect the turrets from enemy attacks and also from themselves. Should a turret get too damaged, it has a chance of blowing up, which of course damages things in its vicinity. And if a few more turrets stand close by, you have the risk of causing a chain reaction, which could quickly decimate a very valuable line of defense. Now, while Cambia is building, we just had a chunk of spacecraft fall from the sky, this one though conveniently close to our base. Cambia is now also done with the sandstone structure, and that means sandbags are up next. These will provide some cover for the turrets behind them, while still allowing the turrets to fire over them. This will make the turrets a bit harder to hit, and I think we can use every added bit of protection. Now for the turrets themselves we still need a bit more steel, and well, we have a small steel vein right in our base here, so we'll quickly have Cambia mine that out. We can then replace the wall with sandstone, and this will also slightly increase the beauty of both rooms, at least of course compared to rough stone walls. As Cambia then heads off to bed we have another meteorite coming in, once again dropping a large amount of silver on the map. Unfortunately it has landed pretty far off though, and if I'm not mistaken we also still have another one a bit closer to the base, but eventually I think we will mount a small expedition. For the moment though, let's focus on our defenses, because the next morning it is finally time to put down the turrets. And we are allowing ourselves the luxury of building plus steel turrets. Next to 100 steel and 3 components, those also require a whopping 75 plus steel per unit, but the high costs also result in high durability. Plus steel turrets are definitely a lot tougher to take down compared to steel turrets, still they are far away from being indestructible, which is, like I said, one of the main reasons I put them behind our first line of defenses. Now about the turrets themselves, I already put three down here and that number has a reason. While it took us quite a while to research turrets, they are themselves not all that powerful. Their damage output is in the lower half of what's available in terms of weaponry, and their big disadvantage is the slow cooldown. Turrets fire in three shot bursts, with a delay of about five seconds between each burst. Compare that to the machine pistol that Cambia currently has equipped, which conveniently also fires three shots per burst, but has a cooldown of less than one second. That means, from the very beginning, turrets are best used in greater numbers, so that they can efficiently take out enemies before getting destroyed as a result of their slow fire rate. Now, one last thing about turrets that should not be overlooked is their need for electricity. A turret can only function properly if it's hooked up to power, however, for the sake of saving power, it is recommended to turn the turrets off when they're not in use. Should we have a raid coming in, we will flick them on, but with every turret consuming 350 watts even if it doesn't shoot, it is generally better to keep them powered off until a danger arrives. Now that we have turrets, I think batteries will also get a bit more important, because let's say we get a raid during the night and there is no wind, then we could flick on our turrets as much as we wanted, we still wouldn't have any power. So batteries are likely a research project for the near future. For the moment though, Cambia can head off to bed with his mission accomplished. We now have three gun turrets in place and our base has become a bit more secure. We are of course not entirely safe from problems and so at night we get another one. One of the solar panels breaks down and we quickly have to use one of our last components to fix it. Then as Cambia is having breakfast, the comms console makes its first appearance, because a trade ship is passing by in orbit. And using the comms console we can now contact that ship and see if we can trade anything. Alright, now what we're doing here is we're selling pretty much all of the dead man's clothing we have. Not only will this make us a bit of money, but it will also clear some storage space, and you can of course never have enough of that. We are also not buying anything ourselves, the trader didn't really have anything of interest here. Still, we just made about 200 silver, maybe that's enough to buy something valuable from the next one. Now Cambia has also finally hooked up all the turrets to the power grid, and we are now a bit more ready to whatever Randy Random has to throw at us. And speak of the devil, with the turrets just finished, another challenge presents itself. And it is, once again, a group of man-hunting muffalos. Now, even though we have our new turrets here, we are of course not going to let them into our base, but that doesn't mean we can't do a bit of hunting. 
They are aggressive already, so we don't have the risk of aggroing them any further. And Cambia also, of course, has superior firepower. Since they will stay in the area for a while, we also don't necessarily have to kill them. Injuring them enough to get them to bleed out will do just fine. And with the first muffalo here, we already achieved that. Maybe we can manage to hurt a few more. Alright, I think that's two injured muffalos now, and that's enough. They are getting a bit too close for my comfort, so let's retreat behind locked doors. For a few moments now, the muffalos will start battering against it, so we should stay close to immediately get started with the necessary repairs. Alright, wonderful, the muffalos have buggered off, two of them will sooner or later die to their injuries, and they are safely locked out and Cambia can continue with his business. And for the next few hours, that business will consist of some cooking. You might have been able to see it while we were walking by, our muffalo has run out of food. So we will now have Cambia cook up seven simple meals, made out of muffalo meat, to feed our animal friend. We will also not allow Cambia to take a meal for himself, and with the muffalo back inside of the stables we will also forbid the door, so that Cambia has no other choice but to eat something else. And that something else will soon be human meat again, because we are now queuing up two butchering orders for the two attackers that we just killed. Once Cambia has eaten and hauled everything back into storage, she can then go to bed. And in good Sim Sunday style, I've missed saying this, we can jump ahead to the next morning. And that morning begins with milking the muffalo. And after Cambia has consumed most of the milk in storage, an addition to the supplies here is much needed. Afterwards, I now have another interesting crafting job waiting. Up next, Cambia will make himself a button-down shirt. Cambia is currently not wearing anything directly on his upper body, he just has an armor vest equipped and on top of that the parka. That still leaves room for a shirt underneath it all, and we're choosing the button-down shirt here instead of the normal t-shirt, because the button-down shirt is slightly superior in terms of insulation and protection. It does have a slightly higher material cost, however, but that is not that big of an issue for us, because of course we are making the shirt out of human leather. That also has the added bonus of increasing Cambia's mood when he's eventually wearing the shirt. Now quick jump over to the muffalo herd and we can see here not only are the two muffalo that we shot already dead, but a polar bear has also entered the picture. And he is now feeding on the muffalo corpses, which of course means he's taking precious meat away from Cambia. At the moment though we can't really do anything about that, a straight up fight with a polar bear is dangerous enough as it is, and we also still have five man hunting muffalos on top of that. But at least Randy Random is generous today, gifting us with the passing by of another trade ship. Now we'll quickly have Cambia finish the button-down shirt first. We can see here it's only of shoddy quality, but that's better than nothing. We can also see that at the moment Cambia has a plus 3 to his mood from the human leather pants, but we'll have him equip the shirt now, and that rating will jump up in the moment. But right now, let's get to trading. Alright, this right here is a pirate merchant, meaning that he buys and sells a few more interesting things. However, we are once again limiting ourselves exclusively to selling here. Buying a slave would definitely be tempting, but we currently do not have the funds to do so. So we're just selling a few unnecessary weapons here for a meager profit of 59 silver. And here we can now also see the effect of the button-down shirt kick in. Cambia's previous plus 3 mood bonus has changed into a plus 5. Now, we have turrets in place and a shirt on Cambia's body, and that means it's time for the next point on the to-do list, and that would be the research of stone cutting. 
Stone cutting will allow Cambia to make stone blocks out of stone chunks, and those stone blocks can then be used to build walls and structures. Since we are slowly running out of metal in the close vicinity, I think now is a good point to research this, because we will definitely have to do some building in the near future, and just like with our turret defenses, I don't want to waste precious steel to do that. And with only 600 points, the research project here will be a quick one, Cambia is already a very good researcher, and the high-tech research bench will increase his speed even further. In the evening then we have an eclipse strike and drain our solar power, but Cambia will head off to bed in a few moments anyway, and our wind turbines are also still running strong. In the early morning hours then the third trade ship passes by, it seems like Randy can't get enough of them, and we will of course gladly take the opportunity. Alright, this time we're not only selling clothes, but also leather. Now we will keep the human leather and the muffalo leather, but we'll sell the cow skin, the elk hide, the polar bear skin and the snow hair leather. We don't really have huge stacks of those anyway, and with Cambia being all on his own, I don't really think he will have the time to spend all of the materials in crafting. So we will make a quick 177 silver instead, slowly but steadily accumulating a bit of wealth here. Now we have also reached the point where the manhunting muffalos have tired themselves out. They are now all asleep and even if they would wake up, their manhunting status would be gone. I assume the polar bear is also well fed and not aggressive at the moment, and so we can now send Cambia back out without the risk of any danger. And we'll use the opportunity here to disassemble the ship chunk that has fallen from the sky. With only one component left in storage, adding another 8 will be a huge relief. And a few of those components will also immediately be used again, as we will now have Cambia craft himself an advanced helmet. Now, the advanced helmet would of course replace Cambia's tuke, and in doing so, Cambia would lose some cold protection. However, the Mega Sloth Bull Parker keeps him so warm, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. The advanced helmet, on the other hand, will be made out of plasteel and provide him with some excellent protection. Compared to the simple helmet, it is not only lighter, but also more durable, and it also offers increased protection against sharp and blunt weapons. Now both the simple and the advanced helmet add a small movement speed penalty, but once again the advanced helmet shines here, because its penalty is only half of that of the simple helmet. Now unfortunately we have to interrupt the crafting job for a moment here, because with the polar bear still roaming around we will have to do some hunting. Sooner or later I assume the muffalos will wander off, and at that point the polar bear will come for us. So I would rather have Cambia take care of the problem before it becomes one, which is why we're sending him out here machine pistol ready. Now luckily, thanks to the jogger trade, we are still able to outrun the polar bear, but you can see it here, it is a close call. Now of course, the polar bear doesn't die from just a few gunshots, but once it is done pounding on the door here, it will realize that it can't get in, and then wander off, waiting for us to come outside. And after repairing the door real quick here, that is exactly what we'll do. We'll have Cambia peek outside and take a few more shots. And wonderful, that is already enough to down the polar bear, and we can now simply beat it to death. Alright, perfect, with that we can now add the polar bear and the two muffalo corpses to our storage, once again providing us with a nice supply of meat and leather. In the evening then, the eclipse also comes to an end, and on the next day, Cambia is already back at the workbench. And that day passes by without any incidents, but on the next morning we can see our muffalo has run out of food again. So we will once again have Cambia cook up a few simple meals here, and while we're inside of the stables, we can also quickly milk the muffalo. We can then have Cambia go back and quickly finish the advanced helmet, which ends up being of normal quality and can immediately be equipped. And with the helmet ready, Cambia can now, for the very first time, shear the muffalo. The muffalo wool growth has been pretty slow, Cambia can only shear it once every 25 days, but that process will produce a whopping 100 units of warm muffalo wool. 
Now, while Cambia is busy, another opportunity to trade here presents itself. This time, it's a group of traders passing by on the map, and once they have reached our base, we will have a quick chat with them. Now, Cambia's first cheering attempt here unfortunately fails, but just like with milking, in a few moments, he can simply try again. And this time he succeeds, and we receive 100 units of buffalo wool. While Cambia is researching and waiting for the traders to arrive, we then get another event, an opportunity for peace talks with one of the hostile factions. Now we'll take notice of that, but we won't take immediate action. It seems like this faction is a tribe, and those are generally a bit easier to defeat in raids compared to pirates, so it might actually be a good idea to leave them hostile. For the moment, though, we have more important things to take care of, as the trade caravan has finally arrived. And this time we're actually buying something, to be precise, 150 units of agave fruit. I also sold Cambia's old cloth toque, but in the end we still have to pay about 300 silver. I think that will be money well spent, however, because we now once again have plant matter available. And we'll do a bit of cooking with that in the next episode, and we'll wrap this one up after trading for one last time. Yes, you're seeing that right, another orbital trader has passed by, and this time it is a combat supplier. This means we can sell a few low-value weapons for the enormous profit of 10 silver, but after just spending about 300, we no longer have the cash to buy anything for our own here. That is not as big of a problem, though, because after our research efforts in the last episode, we now have the option to craft a few interesting things ourselves. That is also something that might happen in the next episode. For today, though, we'll wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed another episode of Adventures Out on the Ice Sheet. If you did, then please go ahead and leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already and want to stay up to date on all the latest videos, then go ahead and feel free to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.